Hi everyone, I'm Dale Smith, aka Journo Dale, and we're here to talk about Canadian politics. This week, I wanted to talk a little bit about private members' bills and the ways in which they can be weaponized. And one of the things that is really kind of in my craw right now is the way in which they're being politicized both by media and by other parties and by parties themselves. And what gets me really worked up about this is it ends up having a detrimental impact on the autonomy of MPs themselves. And that's a really kind of fundamentally important thing when it comes to the health of our democracy. So there are three bills that I'm thinking of right now. The first one is from Conservative MP Kathy Wagenthal, which aims to uh, ban sex selection abortions. Uh, which is a giant can of worms. And this particular issue in terms of backbenchers bringing forward anti-abortion bills was a big deal in the election because it was one of those things where conservative leader Andrew Scheer, who is personally pro-life, um, never really gave an adequate answer for in terms of how he would deal with this kind of an issue in his party. Uh, Stephen Harper, uh, when he was Prime Minister and leader of the party, worked very hard to clamp down on any of these kinds of bills because he didn't want them to blow up in the public discourse, and for the most part he managed to. Um, you know, uh, they, they tried a couple of backdoor ways of approaching this, uh, Wagenthal being one of the MPs who attempted, but uh, you know, it never really got anywhere, in part because Harper kind of kept his iron fist uh, on that issue. Uh, Scheer is not quite so iron-fisted about it, and that's, you know, one of those things where it kind of hurt the party a little bit in the polls uh, during the election because uh, there was this concern that uh, backbenchers could start, uh, would have a freer hand in, in any way uh, to, to bring these kinds of bills forward. and. Um, that causes a great deal of concern for a great many people, uh, not unsurprisingly. The second bill is one of a couple that Liberal MP and Maverick, uh, Nathaniel Erskine Smith, uh, has tabled. And the one in particular that's gotten a lot of attention uh, is looking to decriminalize small personal amounts of hard drugs in order to better treat uh, addiction and so on uh, as a public health issue and not as a criminal justice issue. Uh, and that is um, fairly sound practice in a number of countries. And it's something he's looking to have that dialogue on um, in Canada. The party hasn't said whether or not uh, they're gonna be supportive. Trudeau himself has basically said, um, it's not a good time for that in Canada right now, uh, essentially. Um, and nevertheless, uh, the Conservatives came out with a press release this past week that was, you know, saying the Liberals are trying to legalize all hard drugs, and that's not it at all. The party was not involved in this, and it wasn't a, about legalizing drugs, it was about decriminalizing small personal amounts, which is a very big difference. But nevertheless, the Conservatives are trying to paint the entire Liberal Party uh, with one uh, MP's uh, private member's bill, uh, which is a problem. The third bill uh, that I'm thinking of is the NDP's Pharmacare bill. And why it's a problem, aside from the fact that this bill is ridiculous and unconstitutional because uh, it's likely, uh, well, Pharmacare is provincial jurisdiction, but it's also, this bill um, is basically a de facto money bill, which private, member, private members' bills can't be. Um, so I doubt it's going to be even votable. But why I think it's an issue is because the party leader decided that this was going to be their first bill. And so it became the MP who's, um, the first NDP MP to have a private member's slot wound up being Peter Julian, so he had to basically surrender his slot for the party leader 
uh, to put this bill forward. And I think that's also a problem because it's also impacting on Mr. Julian's ability to bring forward a bill on an issue that he um, might have been more uh, personally involved in or, or interested in uh, pursuing. Um, and it's one of these issues where, I mean, they're private members' bills for a reason. It's so that the individual MP has um, a, a couple hours in the life of a parliament to bring forward an issue that is concerned to them personally. And I know the NDP like to make this big deal about how we all sing from the same song sheet and, um, you know, we all believe the same things. It still does impact on the ability of the individual MP to pursue uh, something that they care about. And sure, Mr. Julian might be passionate about pharmacare, but he might also be passionate about something else that he now cannot bring forward. And I think that is a problem regardless. So why I wanted to draw attention to, to these is the ways in which we talk about private members' business and the ways in which parties react to it, um, I think needs to, we need to be more conscious of it. Um, especially because this is about the individual agency uh, and autonomy uh, of an MP. Um, remember that in our system, we don't vote for parties and they assign people to those slots. No, we vote for individuals. It's an individual's name that's on the ballot. And so it affords them uh, a certain amount of uh, privileges and responsibilities uh, as an individual running who is, yes, running under a party banner, but we are electing the person, not the party. And if we try and clamp down on any expression that they have as an individual, and that is really what we're doing in all three of these cases, um, I think it has a detrimental impact on the way in which we conceive uh, of the role of an MP. And I'm not going to um, dismiss the, the role of the media in this because the media is also culpable uh, in terms of both making an election issue out of private members' business uh, during the election when it comes to issues like abortion. Um, I, again, um, because it puts that on the party leader, uh, it again, impacts on the ability of an MP to put forward something that uh, they are concerned about, even if it is a problematic issue like abortion. Um, it's, it's something that um, by, by forcing basically the leader's hand on it, um, it, it impacts on, on the ability of an MP to have that modicum of individual expression. It's also, uh, for, for media, uh, one of these kinds of uh, things where on the one hand, we say we want more independent MPs, and on the other hand, we get really strange when an MP acts independently and start saying things like, is the leader losing control of their caucus? Um, and that's not healthy either. And I don't know that we have a very good balance in our discourse when it comes to these kinds of issues. And that's one of the reasons why I just felt it was important to highlight these three bills and the ways in which we're discussing them. Because Parliament's important, the, the role of an MP is important. And if we treat them like they're just drones uh, to parrot messages for the leader, then that's a problem. And it's already a problem that MPs are spending a lot of their day reading prepared scripts into the record um, without actually engaging or debating. And if we want to further limit their ability to put forward private members' bills or motions or whatnot, um, and essentially treat them like they should be uh, ciphers of a leader or um, merely drones for the party to uh, act around, um, then why bother having MPs? Why not just fill the, the seats with battle droids that, you know, 
we can program to do uh, just as much um, without having to um, turn individual MPs into puppets. So that's really what I want to drive home here is that this stuff does matter in the scope of Parliament um, uh, broadly and and we should we should pay attention to that and we should care about how we're discussing it. And that's everything for this week. Join us again next week for some more Canadian politics. I'm Dale Smith. It's at journo underscore Dale on Twitter. And don't forget to like the video, share, subscribe, and support us on Patreon. Thanks, everyone.